Hi everyone and welcome to a further episode of the COVID-19 Awareness Video Series. My name is Matt Takai. I am one of two hosts for these series and today we'll be talking about the topic of how the pandemic is affecting homeless youth in California, including policies and programs which absolutely need to be implemented right now in order to mitigate negative effects, including a trauma. And today's guest is the Executive Director of the California Coalition for Youth, I am delighted and excited to welcome Javon Wilkes. Good morning, Javon. Good morning. How you doing? I'm blessed. How are you? Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Fantastic. Um, Javon, you know, I did a bit of research, of course, and uh, I went through a list of, I mean, you know, all the positions of responsibility that you have held over the last couple of years. And uh, at some point I thought, you know, this guy, without knowing, you know, without having seen you before, I thought this guy must be like in his mid 40s. And it turns out you're actually even a year younger than I am. I'm 31. So, I mean, an incredible. Sorry. And you're 31 as well. Huh? You just turned 30, though. Just turned 31. Oh, just turned 31. Well, we're in the same age group in that case. But anyway, I mean, an impressive, impressive uh, CV. And Javon, I mean, um, could you tell us a little bit about your story? You know, to me, it seems like. You, as I said, you hold so many positions. Uh, you like LeBron James for you know youth advocacy out there. Can you just tell us a little about about your story and how you, how uh, you got into the position you are in today? Yes, yes. Thank you so much, uh, LeBron James. I wish I could be that on the court. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my journey really consists of experiences in the foster care system, uh, from birth, behavioral health system, mental health police diversion programs, and of course, homelessness. Um, after experiencing homelessness at the age of 14, I began to kind of explore opportunities to fight for my peers that I was experiencing homelessness with, and also younger people so that they have a chance at a promising future. Uh, from there, I joined the California Coalition for Youth that opportunity for young people to, to amplify their voices. And I became a youth advocate at the age of 16, became a board member at the age of 17, and remained in that position for 12 years before becoming the executive director at the age of 30. And again, I'm 31 now, um, but it was, it was all in God's plan. Yeah, well, incredible journey, sincerely, and I mean, you know, I wanted to just take you back to when you were 14 and, um, you know, you're homeless and just speak to yourself. You know, it's like a, I don't know, a cold, random February night. Um, you're hungry. You know, where do you find this spark? You know, the, the light at the end of the tunnel. What is the inner voice that is telling you, Devon, just keep moving on, just keep going. You know, you, you'll get through this. I mean, how, how on earth did you manage, you know, to get to where you are now? <sighs> man, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a black man of faith. And without God, I'm nothing. I was given a light at birth. Now, granted, no comprehension, no understanding of what that meant at that time. But as I've walked this journey, the light began to just get brighter. And yeah. even on dark days, and boy, do I have them. I, I, I can't deny my potential, yeah. my shine. And my shine is a reflection of love. And it's a love I've received from loved ones um, that empower and inspire, um, you know, and that goes to a, a saying of Ubuntu, I am because we are. And, you know, experiencing cold nights and rainfall and trying to find food and shower and shelter, there's only one reason why I got to that because my destiny was laid out. I was yeah. supposed to be in this position because it was a call and God got me through all of that. And considering where I am in a position to use my voice, use my story and bring young people to the forefront because they're living it now. Yeah, exactly. And I just want to get to that. I mean, you know, it's, we have real time examples still today, of course, and, you know, um, of the impact of especially COVID-19 currently on California's homeless youth and across the world, of, of course, as well. Um, how are they faring right now? You know, you, you, you must be in direct touch with them in some way. I mean, how are they faring? You know, it, those stories definitely touch my heart. I'm, I'm not only in touch with young people that reach out through the California Coalition for Youth and through our 
our crisis line, the California Youth Crisis Line, but we we have these these connections. And for me, it, it, it's a lot of young people that I've I've worked with over the years. And during this time of COVID nineteen and and protests, young people are experiencing mental health crises and unemployment at alarming rates. When you add homelessness, a young person will endure hardship finding food, clothing, access to showers, clean water, and using the restroom. You know, places that were frequently used prior to COVID are closed. How are they supposed to get, you know, protect a personal protective uh, equipment and and sanitation item? They need a place to stay. And when you think about it, a hug. Yeah. When was the last time they received a love and hug? You know, yeah, it's, and, yeah. and yet they're surviving through their resilience and we can make that journey better. Yeah. I and others have dedicated our lives to, to make young, young, young people and, and uplift their, their stories and make sure that homelessness is short lived, that it's, you know, non recurring and that it's rare within California. And just yesterday, the governor announced that, you know, everybody must wear a mask outdoors. How do yeah. young people sleeping on the streets afford a mask yeah. or afford to keep one clean? I mean, yeah. just think about that. Yeah. Well, so I certainly agree. Sometimes a bit of humanity is all it takes. I mean, um, and you just mentioned it, I mean, touched upon this, the topic of public policy and from a public policy perspective, um, you know, are there program services, any sort of, uh, Funding's available as we currently speak. What's the situation there? So um, right now, you know, our, our legislator jointly proposed $350 million to combat homelessness in California in this year's budget. A minimum of 8% or $28 million is to be used to serve youth experiencing homelessness. But we don't know if the governor... Governor Gavin Newsom will agree to that proposal and keep it in. Um, I hope so. Executive orders are being developed to keep youth from exiting the foster care system into homelessness. And our state is currently working on a program called Project Room Key, and that's seeking to get our most COVID-19 vulnerable people into hotel rooms. And it's working. And, you know, they, they are making sure that they're also mindful of youth and, and their participation and engagement. And in addition to that, you know, as director of the youth engagement with the California Children's Trust, it's pivotal that we transform our youth behavioral and mental health system. You know, as homelessness is a public health crisis and, and our youth are experiencing homelessness, it, 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 it is time to, to make a shift and make sure that their healthy development and social and emotional well being is prioritized. And, to prevent a lifetime of homelessness for these young people, we must expand on, on the services and access and participation amongst the youth. We must maximize local, state, and federal dollars and, and reinvent a system of care for our youth. We can only get there when we center that approach on equity and justice. Yeah, well, I mean, plenty of work to do, but you certainly play a part. That That is, you know, without a doubt. Um, and in the context of, of all of this, you know, are there any words of encouragement any tips and resources you can share with our viewers out there? You know, and and taking in a lot of what's going on today, um, I think one simple thing that young people can do and and center and dive into their strength is breathe. Yeah. You know, stop and focus on your breathing, you know, deep breathing through the nose and, and let the air go through the mouth and repeat to their heart's content. And it may evoke emotions and those emotions are valid, mm. but you are strong and resilient. Yeah. And taking care of yourself is essential. And should you need tools, someone to support you, reach out, demand to be heard. And CCY and our California Youth Crisis Line staff and volunteers are available 24 seven call and text. We also have chat on our website, www.calyouth.org. 
And you can reach us at 800-843-5200. Again, that's 800-843-5200. Your voice is powerful. Your experience is truth. Change is going to come. Yes, it will. Peace and love. Oh, Javon, well, inspiring. I mean, truly, man, it's incredible there. I've seen your other videos and the way you speak, you know, you have this this um, uh, simplicity about you and a non-judgmental way of, of going, you know, with, along with getting along with people and sort of in, the, in, the, in your way you communicate, despite, you know, despite the dire circumstances you find yourself in. And it's just inspiring. And I, and I really hope that, that, you know, you have plenty more success uh, reaching out to the to, to the youth out there. Certainly, I mean, all the best, all the best with that. Um, and guys, just make sure to check out, you know, further resources as well on our website. Plenty to find there, including online digital publications, which are for free. So make sure to check them out. And, you know, otherwise, stay safe. Take care of yourselves. For Mental Health California, my name is Matt Akai. See you soon. Thank you, Javon. Thank you. Thank you.